Hi everyone, I hope you're doing well. It's Allie, and today I'm coming to you from downtown Madison at the Wisconsin State Capitol. And you can see um, today we have a flag at half mast. If anyone's wondering, it's because a Marine died in um, Wisconsin, and that's how they honor uh, people um, here in our state capitol, is they'll lower the flag to half mast. But I'm sure a couple people will notice it. That's just a coincidence for me showing up on this day um, for my lecture. And the reason I chose the busy downtown Madison, where you might hear some street noises and some construction, is because this week we're looking at Senator Joseph McCarthy, who was a senator from the state of Wisconsin. So I thought this would be a fitting place to have our lecture. And um, this uh, Red Scare, or McCarthyism, it's sometimes referred to um, in the 1950s. It was really a thing that hit the entertainment industry hard, um, specifically the realm of film and television. And so um, I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about that first. There's a pamphlet. So you'll hear the word red channels. You'll hear me refer to that in lecture. And then you'll also um, see that in our textbook and in some of our screenings, I might refer to the red channels. The red channels is an actual pamphlet. It's not a television channel. People get that one confused all the time. Um, it's actually called the red channels the report of communist influence in radio and television and this is published in 1950 it actually names 151 specific individuals who allegedly have ties to the communist party and from that moment on pretty much those people are blacklisted from working in hollywood um, one of the ones that you'll see uh, mentioned in our textbook for sure is Jean Muir and she stars on the Aldrich family. She's um, considered the first one who's blacklisted from um, this uh, Red Channels pamphlet. Uh, also Pete Seeger is blacklisted. He's a folk musician. Um, he'll come up in our studies again in the 1960s. He stays uh, pretty much not on television until the Smothers Brothers take that risk with him in the late 1960s. And so these are long lasting impact when you end up on, um, when you end up blacklisted and uh, banned from work. And this happened to actors, musicians, and other people in the industry, not even stars, but writers, people from behind the scenes, if you were alleged to have these ties. And remember, we're in America. If you want to be a communist in this country, you should have the right to belong to whatever party, to have whatever ideology that you desire. But in the 1950s, we're in a time of um, a Cold War period after World War II. And this Cold War between communist countries, particularly uh, the Soviet Union, the USSR, and America, will stay until we'll see at the end of the 1980s when the Berlin Wall falls. Um, we'll study that in our studies as well. So this was really a big deal when Senator M McCarthy said that you were a communist and took you down it was huge and there were actually congressional hearings about this this was a very intimidating tactic and there was a very powerful senator with all of the power of the state on his side and he was taking on individuals in the entertainment industry saying that their political and ideological beliefs were detrimental to this country that went on for a couple of years and people started getting a little bit worried people were somewhat concerned but it wasn't really until Ed Murrow and Fred Friendly take on Senator McCarthy on the medium of television that we see this change start to occur. And sometimes this is referred to as television's finest hour, and that's referring specifically to the March 9th, 1954 broadcast. And Murrow had taken on McCarthy a couple times before this, but in this special episode, he uses the Senator's own words. He takes clips from the hearings and he tries to point out, along with producer Fred Friendly, he tries to sway the opinion of the American public that indeed the senator and his actions are more harmful to America and to democracy than communism is itself. And um, honestly, by the time Merle was done dissecting this situation on national television, opinion had turned. And um, it's not print the print media, it's not you know, a well-respected uh, printed journalist who takes on the senator. This is a television journalist, and he rises to the very finest of journalism at this moment. And I like newscasters today. I think there's a lot of really cool ones who I've seen in my generation, 
We'll watch Dan Rather a little bit um, later when we watch the Democratic National Convention. And after watching him kind of get hassled around the floor of the DNC in 1968, it's hard not to like him. But Ed Murrow and Fred Friendly, I don't know if journalism has even reached these heights again. And um, we're talking like 70 years later at this point. So what we're going to watch this week when we see, um, see it now and... Um, Murrow versus McCarthy is landmark television and I kind of wanted to just frame why this was so important and um, there's a couple other uh, people that I didn't mention I mentioned um, Jean Muir already and she ends up being the one who's uh, first blacklisted and then I quickly mentioned um, Pete Seeger and again this is happening in the early 1950s Pete Seeger doesn't really appear on television for decades until we see him on the Smothers Brothers and then there's another one that I always try to mention um, every semester, and that's Philip Loeb. And he's an actor on The Goldbergs, and that's a really popular show in this era. And um, he ends up being blacklisted, and then ultimately he commits suicide. And his friends say it was due to him being this despondent after not having the ability to work. So I want you to know that, yes, this impacted people's jobs, it impacted people's professions, but it also impacted individual people in their lives. And so this abuse of power that Senator McCarthy from my home state of Wisconsin shows in this um, time period, it, it, it's pretty um, terrible. And it's the medium of television that takes him on and kind of exposes his, uh, I guess, I was going to say sins to the world, exposes his um, hypocrisy. So he's oftentimes the senator has no proof. He's just making wild allegations at people without proper proof. And he's taking them into these hearings and impacting their lives. And he hasn't gone through the kind of protocol that um, I believe and Murrow and Friendly. And I believe you guys will all agree with us when you um, see these clips this week. Uh, this is a serious um, situation, and seeing television rise is uh, pretty incredible. The other thing we'll look at this week is the quiz show scandals. And the quiz show scandals are exactly what they sound like. Uh, the quiz shows in the 1950s, this was a single sponsor era. And um, so the one single sponsor has a huge amount of power at this time to dictate what should be happening on a show. And it starts to get a little bit carried away where instead of running honest quiz shows, we start hearing that um, things are starting to get rigged. And this is uh, particularly evident um, with um, Herb Stemple and uh, Charles Van Doren on a show called 21. And uh, Charles Van Doren, he's like really kind of a handsome, super televisual guy. He's uh, very educated, um, he's well-mannered, and they, the producers want him to be the winner. And he faces off against Herb Stemple, who's a regular, like, blue-collar guy from New York City. He's uh, um, on the GI Bill to go to college, and, and he wants to be on this quiz show, too. And they have him throw it. And ultimately, he, he does do that, but then he kind of spills the beans. And so this ends up um, coming out to the public a little bit later than, than during the time period. And this, along with this whole situation with um, Senator McCarthy and then watching Senator McCarthy's downfall on television, starts to change the public's perception of this medium. And so prior to this time period, it might be hard to believe for us, but prior to this, people tended to believe what they saw on television. And after this, they start to question it. And we'll also watch um, an episode of The Twilight Zone this week. I'm sure you guys will all enjoy that. And that episode is allegorically discussing McCarthyism at the era. Again, thank you for your attention, and I hope you enjoy this week's screenings.